Hi everyone and very good evening to all of you. Probably the day that you're waiting for, not in a good way, but yes, uh, the need PG2022 and uh, you know the clinical questions as we expected was there and um, most of you as you are correctly saying that the question was not very tough, that's very true, but the questions options were a bit tricky as you expect from any competitive exam. I have tried to recollect the questions only with your effort and your help. I'm truly thankful to all my students who have been so much helpful every time. They give me questions within a fraction of you know, a few two to three hours and really thank you to all of them again um, who could help me to recall all the questions. I could recall around 25 questions of pathology as of yet. Uh, I have tried to put the options correct, the questions correct, but because they are all recall based questions, so I would encourage all of you to please correct me if you find any mistakes. At the same time, let me know that uh, what actually was going in your mind and maybe we can sort it out for the future uh, questions also. But for those uh, who are actually uh, planning to appear for the next years of uh, NEET PG or NICT, I'll also request you to see these questions just to understand the pattern of the questions uh, to maybe understand how would they have marked the uh, options because I've tried to also recall the questions here correctly along with all the options. So that is one very important other, other thing that you should be taking care of. Uh, without wasting your time, I'll start with a single question. Uh, you know, this is the first uh, first uh, page of my genetics notes that is often I uh, teach in my classes. So I am very sure you might also mark this question correctly and I will uh, encourage that if you can please uh, also tell what is your answer and let's try to answer it from there also. So single nucleotide change resulting in a stop codon, what do you think it is? Uh, first of all, it's a very practically made question. SNP is any change in a, a DNA sequence and because something is a stop codon, the answer should be obviously a nonsense mutation is also called as termination. Okay, it is also referred to as a termination mutation. Okay. So it is also called as termination codon and we all know the termination codons are the three U, yes, as well as I always talk about A, AG, okay, A, AG, LAGA. So UAA, UAG and UGA, okay. Uh, move to the next question. Yes, stop codon was definitely was the question. Uh, next question. Uh, this is a question which often I have discussed in my test and discussion is thromboelastography. Now this is not a new question. This question actually has was... Uh, asked in NICT two years back. So I will ask, I will say this is a complete repeat question. Nothing new about it. Uh, a uh, stop codon, uh, sorry, a, a trauma patient was to undergo emergency laparotomy and uh, they wanted to monitor the correlation studies where the following is the investigation of choice. So as you see, what happens in this test is if you uh, look at the graph here, what they do is they make a baseline graph like this. Um, I'll make a baseline graph like this. So initially there is a primary wave, then there is a secondary wave and finally when they put thrombolysis, the wave stops. So the three ways that the graph entirely took, takes into account, uh, the first one is a primary wave that looks into platelet, uh, sorry, the platelet studies. The second one, uh, the second one is the secondary uh, coagulation step that is the uh, thrombus formation and finally at the last point there is a at the last point, there is what is called as a fibrinolysis. Okay, the last one is actually a fibrinolysis. So, this part here is a fibrinolysis. So, what happens is because you are able to look at all the three um, uh, problems, that is the primary wave, secondary wave thrombolysis, then therefore it is called as a thrombo. Okay, the name is thromboelastography. Okay, the name is thromboelastography this is sorry thromboelastography okay um, the other options were quite you know different type of sonography plasmography which obviously this is not the case to look at the studies you go to what is called as thromboelastography now this was a pretty you know good question um, you know i would like to uh, make you understand here what will increase our lifespan? Now, the two questions on uh, uh, the topic of aging. One was a question which is which will increase a lifespan, and one of the question was which is not seen in a process called as aging. Now, uh, for those who are my regular students, will always remember when I take a first break in my cell injury chapter, I talk about 
Now, this is the best way to uh, delay the aging process and that is decreasing calorie intake. So, there are two things that can decrease the calorie intake. One is uh, uh, decreasing calorie and one more is this compound called as sirtuins and you all remember sirtuin is activated by this unique substance that is called as, yes, it's red, red wine. Yeah. So, what is red? Red wine is a substance which can actually also activate the uh, uh, activation of sirtuin. Now, remember one thing, the calorie restriction is one thing which will is a proven way. So, regular exercise is definitely a good way, might be a good way in days to come, but right now what is proven way is a proven, the question was clearly asking you which is a proven way, the proven way is decreasing calorie intake by around 30%. So, uh, as as you see many of you know, you know, the, know that um, we often have weight loss, the weight loss is one of a very good way and occasional fasting is also a very good way to decrease the calorie intake. Okay. Uh, which of the following is the autosomal uh, dom autosomal receive evidence? So, what is your answer, guys? This is a very pretty straight away question. And the answer is yes, it is cystic fibrosis. Remember, Huntington disease, achondroplasia, these sorry, these all are the autosomal dominant diseases. Okay, please remember these all three they are autosomal dominant diseases. Okay. Uh, one thing uh, often asked to me, sir, how to remember these uh, autosomal dominant or recessive? I always say one thing, you know, uh, one thing is that I, I always distribute some notes in my uh, in my regular classes telling you that they could, these are the notes and at least read these things at any time of your preparation. So I give you a notes of autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, extinct dominant, extinct recessive, and I tell you, please, ek isko lena. last time the question came was on Turner syndrome, this time of Glenn filter syndrome, and this time the question is actually on the autosomal recessive inheritance syndrome. So please go through that. Okay. Uh, for those who are asking, sir, where I get this PDF, this PDF will be available in my telegram group just after the completion of this session. Okay. So move to the next question. Yes, this again question, you know, uh, everything is from the notes. I, I, so for someone who has actually attended my classes, they will actually be uh, so much confident about it. What is nuclear? What is a neutrophil? Extra cellular traps. So net is actually something in which I draw an image like this. You remember, this is a neutrophil, okay? And if some many bacteria they attack to each each other like this, it's a cocci, bacilli, everything. Neutrophil release every chromatin out. It it will get lysed release the fibrils out and the fibril will be destroyed because the fibrils have very high concentration of the antimicrobial enzymes. But surely what net doesn't have is doesn't have a mitochondrial DNA. Okay, surely net doesn't have a mitochondrial DNA, is no doubt about it. Now one uh, other thing that you should understand is, you know, net is seen in a bacterial infection, it can be seen in sepsis, it's activated by the platelet in the circulation and the lysis occurs by this enzyme called as arginase and um, the problem of the net is that it's a type of society benefit but the problem is it can also increase the risk of SLE. That can another be a question in the upcoming um, increases the risk of SLE. This can also be asked in the next uh, coming questions. Okay. Now, this was a, uh, you know, a question that has confused a lot of students. I'll just uh, tell you why do you got confused. It is a case of the hy uh, hypochromic microcytic uh, RBCs and the RBC indices were set and the targets that are there. Please remember, probably uh, what you have not taken care of is, is this RBC count of 5.2 million. Now, if this would have been a case of iron deficiency anemia, try to always calculate a Menzer index. Sorry. So, guys, what is Menzer? Sorry. What is Menzer index? Menzer index is when you divide the MCV by the RBC count. The MCV by RBC count here was around less than uh, 13 because it's less than 13 here because the RBC count is more. Therefore, the primary diagnosis you should make is of thylacemia minor. Okay. Now, why not iron deficiency anemia? Thalassemia minor and why not RNA anemia? Because had this been RNA anemia, there should there should have been a very low RBC count also, and hence it cannot be a case of RNA deficiency anemia. So yes, uh, the other fourth option was RW. I think the better way to look into this is to try to calculate the HbA2. If this is a case of thalassemia minor, remember thalassemia minor may the HbA value will decrease and the A2 value will increase. The HbF will remain normal, or is normal less than one percent because this will prove it's a case of thalassemia minor. Okay, so one option was also homocysteine. Thank you guys. So one option was also homocysteine. Someone was saying uh, RW, but I will probably correct it and try to just make it correct here. The one of the option here was homocysteine okay chalo next question chalte
Okay, a 56 year old male uh, with the chief complaint of high TLC count, platelet count was high, there was high hemoglobin and dragging such an abdomen and the peripheral smear shows a lot of myelocytes, metamyelocytes, there was also a massive synomegaly here, okay, massive synomegaly here. So this is surely a case of chronic myeloid leukemia and a CML shows often a translocation of 922, which you all know this is a case of a pH chromosome. Yes, it's a case of a pH chromosome, there's no doubt about it. Why? Because this becomes a case of CML and we all are aware that CML, it shows what is called as a pH chromosome, okay? This pen is really creating a problem for me. Anyway, this is a case of pH chromosome and therefore translation 922 is the right answer. Now, I hope you all remember, uh, okay, one option was 822, thank you guys, 822 was one other option. Uh, you know, one more thing you should understand is um, that this is a this is actually called as garden party appearance and garden party appearance can show you myelocytes, metamyelocytes, eosinophils, basophils and all the cells are actually seen in a garden party appearance in a case of CML. Now this uh, question, you know, uh, some of you, I, th I think a lot of questions, a lot of, uh, of you might have marked this question correctly by executing the options. There was a cystoscopy done and was showing you multiple yellow white. Now this is a very interesting line written here yellow white plaques in the bladder and histopathology shows the infiltration lamina propria and look at these black bodies you know these black bodies okay, please can you see these black bodies so these black bodies are called as michaelis gutman body they're called as the michaelis okay they're called as the michaelis gutman body now because they're called as michaelis gutman body it is seen in a case of what is called as a malacoplakia okay it is seen in a case of malacoplakia Okay, and malacoplakia actually uh, it is often due to a chronic uh, inflammation of the bladder, and often the etiology seen here is a proteus infection. It can also be a Escherichia coli. Usually, it is not caused by tuberculosis because tuberculosis will cause you a granuloma formation. So, malacoplakia, what is this? A chronic inflammation of the bladder in which the macrophages they uh, engulf those uh, you know uh, cells, and afterward they have a, a, a calcium deposition inside it. The calcium deposition looks at this blackish color deposition which as I told you, it is called as Michaelis Gutman body. Okay, they're called as Michaelis Gutman bodies. Okay, this was again a pretty simple question. Uh, for those who are getting uh, correctly, I think that is mostly because you have attended the class and you have revised the notes, you know. And you see, the questions were quite simple. I not say very simple, but the question was simple. And those who have read, read from my notes, they have revised it again and again, they'll not make it wrong. And you know, that PDF I shared, 100% strike rate from the entire 200 questions. What more than you would require for that? A, a mid-age male with a painless, low-growing neck um, swelling. Lymph node was there and surgery was done with a biopsy. Picture was given. Now, what is this showing you? It's clearly showing you this orphan anii nuclei. Okay, this is clearly showing you what is called as an orphan anii nuclei. Okay, it is an orphan anii nuclei. And because of an orphan anii nuclei, these all nuclei you see here, I also show the images of this orphan any girl uh, there and this is seen in a case of papillary carcinoma okay it is seen in a case of uh, papillary carcinoma because it's a case of papillary carcinoma if you look at the options here fnac is not diagnostic that is not true because fnac is not not only diagnostic fnac here is confirmatory right and why it is sorry why it is confirmatory because fnac shows this typical cell in the uh, lymph node uh, sorry in the in the biopsy uh, this is a pseudo inclusion because the cytoplasm invaginates into the nucleus and showing that white white appearance called as orphan and a nucleus surely the nuclear region is characterized of the tumor and it spreads through lymphatic spread remember all third carcinoma go by lymphatic spread except follicular carcinoma because follicular carcinoma goes by the hematogenous spread and surely it has excellent prognosis because once you remove the tumor it often doesn't recur there okay so surely the question is uh fnac is not diagnostic because fnac surely surely is diagnostics okay fnac surely is diagnostic of this condition Guys, how are you feeling? What is your feeling of the exam? Are you having that confidence? Yes, I will do well. Because that is what I require from you all. Whatever happens, happens. But right now on the day of the exam, you should feel that confidence. Okay, sir, I have done my good. Let's see what happens in the days to come, right? So please have that confidence. Surely, surely you'll do well. Because I know you all are so much crazy about getting a good rank in NEET PG.
Okay. Ye dekho, this is a question. I, I don't have the exact question because you don't, you don't require the question. Okay. Now, this was a case of an image based question giving you uh, there is something called as uh, yes, it is what? It's a island cells of Langerhan. Very good. It's a island cell Langerhan. This is the exact image I also uploaded in the you know YouTube video. It's island cell of Langerhan. Sorry. It's a case of islet cells of langer hands i hope you have watched the video if not please go through the uh, this channel and try to first of all subscribe the channel that's very very important because i'll put a lot of lot of things in the upcoming days the motivation videos how to revise how to start again how to enjoy the most right the ndpg is over and what you must do is try to enjoy the most in the next upcoming days okay um so this is what uh, rx cell of langer hand is and they are lightly pink in color uh, as corresponding to other areas. These are all, these all eight cells are the, uh, this is an end, endocrine area, right? It's an endocrine area. Okay, this is an endocrine, endocrine area. And these all are the exocrine area. Okay, this is an endocrine. And this is the exocrine area of the gland from which the, all the secretions come out into the outside of the pancreas. So next question, a 27 uh, year old male with a road traffic accident, uh, after two days developed dyspnea, particular rash and unconsciousness. So this is a typical case where after a severe trauma, the patient has suddenly collapsed. And this is a case of what it's a fat and marrow embolism. Now, how do I read? I tell you this, uh, you know, uh, in embolism, you have to remember only two things. I hope you all remember this. Kaha se aya hai, kaha ko jayega. This is a very common thing I tell you in the classes. Kaha se aya hai, kaha so jayega. Matab, most commonly sperm embolism kaha se aya hai dvt kaha ko jayega from it is come from the deep in from of the legs kaha ko jayega in the pulmonary arteries similarly i talk about the systemic thrombus embolism the air embolism the fat embolism and not to forget the amniotic fluid embolism surely this is the case of fat embolism okay next question chalo a 10 year old male presents with edema and asarka and what is diagnosis of the minimal chain disease was made now about the minimal chain disease what is true now this was a slightly you know confusing question for some of the students but i'll tell you you know this is a minimal chain disease once you have diagnosed a case of minimal chain disease it is surely based on wet best to destroy that's very very true statement now the light microscope doesn't show this sorry the light microscope doesn't show this it is shown by the electron microscopy now this is very very important information that you should all be having okay it is electron microscopy sorry this is an electron microscopy which shows it's an electron microscopy which shows the effacement of the protocytes. It is seen not in adults but it's seen in children. So this cannot be the answer here again. Okay, it is seen in children. So that is one thing that we uh, studied, and it often shows selected proteinuria, not the non-selected proteinuria. So the age was 25 years, some saying 20 years. Okay, I'll just take it both as the right question it might be 20 years might be 25 years but whatever it is the answer is still the same it must be a case of minimal change disease okay might be 20 or might be 25 okay Chalo, next question Warburg Gifford. now this is again a confusing statement for some of you see Warburg Gifford kya hota hai? Warburg Gifford is something when a tumor cells take uh, more of the glucose and convert to the lactic acid even presence or absence of oxygen now that lactic acid is again converted to make the glucose lipids and the nucleotides to make more and more tumor cells that means they are making the elements required for cellular metabolism remember it is not reduced it is increased it is not for atp there is no requirement of atp then at least not Yes, they don't prevent apoptosis. That's also is a wrong statement. But surely what is true is they provide the elements for cellular metabolism. No doubt about this. Okay. There should be no doubt about this. Okay. There was a question on tumor lysis syndrome. Guys, I think, yes, I have missed this question. So any of you, can you please tell me what was the exact question on tumor lysis? What was the question on tumor lysis syndrome? Can you please help me, guys? Question on tumor lysis syndrome. What was that? Please let me know, okay? Now, this is again a confusing question to some of you. Now, this was a question in which uh, uh, the 30 year old male with uh, having a child's infertility, similar analysis shows azospermia and diagnosis was done. Now, I hope you are all attending VIBE session because in VIBE, I give you an image of 
testicular atrophy. Now, this is an image I often give to you in the vibe. Even though this is not a case of testicular atrophy, because in testicular atrophy, what you must see is a basement membrane thickening and fibrosis. Okay, and there should be a slight amount of the Leydig cell also being seen here. Right now, in this question, in this question, the case is of infertility and the semen analysis show azospermia and you see there's no cell here there's no cell here because there's no cell here it's completely absent you know what is this this is a seminal vestibules sorry okay now this part is a seminal vestibule okay this is seminal vestibule and you know here is where you find so lady cells but right now you are not able to see the lady cells and therefore, the answer must be certainly cell only tumor. Now, had this been a case of orchitis, you might have seen a lot of neutrophils, which you are not seeing here. Had this been a case of testosterone atrophy, in testosterone atrophy, these base membranes, so the base membrane, that should be very, very thick. It is not showing a very thicker base membrane, and you are not seeing any lytic cell. And hence, there was, this should be a case of certainly cell only tumor. Okay, certainly cell only tumor. Okay, there's also an option of semen minus tumor. That's what I'm saying. I have written it there in the last option C. It is a case of the fourth option is non semen minus germ cell tumor. Okay. There's no question on tumor resistance syndrome. Better <laughs> this create confusion. Okay, some of you saying there was a lymphoblast slide. Was it? Was there any question on lymphoblast beta? Was there any question on lymphoblast? Please let, let me know. Okay, this question a 12 year old male with a with a case of bloating, statoria, and HLA DQ2. So it was actually two, and also what you can say is it can also have actually DQ2, they may have also actually DQ8 and actually DQ B8. Okay, DQ8 is there, and they can also be B8, even though in this question the option was only about the sorry, in this question the option was only about the DQ2, and because it was actually DQ2, it can also be DQ8 and can be B8, it should be a case of celiac disease. Now, because it looks to be a celiac disease, sorry. Because this looks to be a case of celiac disease, okay. Therefore, I think it is very clearly understood it should be a low gluten diet, okay. Low gluten diet, okay. So, MHC2 was there, yes, gluten free diet should be given. A uh, lymphoblast was in peripheral smear. Kiska, Kansa question, was it a different question? So look at the question again and let me again come back to that. Question number 17. A 40 year old patient who was having arthralgia or ulcer and joint pain now this is strictly a case of sle and i hope you remember sle kana i give you a mnemonic yes what is it it is brain okay and then md so soap brain md soap brain md is a typical um, you know a mnemonic of sle and they have oliguria and hematuria rbc cast sure it becomes a case of lupus nephritis okay lupus nephritis even though this is a very long question it is the this of the question was given to me by the students but yes it can be there um okay one was a question a lymphoblast with hyperuricemia low urine output best management probenacid hydration urgent chemotherapy okay i think this was a case this was a question in which we were talking about you know the tumor lysis syndrome see the tumor lysis syndrome may the first thing you do is you give hydration but that is only to prevent it if you want to cure it, then you have to remove all the uric acid out of the body, and that is how you cure that case. Case, okay. Shalom. Uh, raised LDH, uh, elevated bilirubin, hemoglobinuria, and peripheral smear showing cystocytes. So, what is this showing you? It is showing you a case of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. Now, even those students would have guessed it from the choices as well. But you know, this was a very well made question, and they were trying to ask you. Whether you know that there occurs a microangiopathic hematic anemia in a case of the prosthetic heart valve or not. And hence the answer surely is a mechanical second heart sound. Okay, mechanical second heart sound. So that was surely a case what must be here. It should be a mechanical scenario because it is surely not seen with goiter. Splenomegaly is not seen in a case of intravascular hemolysis. You never see splenomegaly and there is no question that there should be any raised amount of HbA2 seen there. So surely the answer should be a mechanical second heart loan and why the reason of this should be found as a prosthetic, sorry, should be found as a prosthetic heart wall. It should be due to a prosthetic heart wall. Okay, that should be the reason why it is being caused here. Okay. 
चलो कैन यू नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन गाइस राइट नो दिस वाज अ स्ट्रेट सिंपल क्वेश्चन इट वाज अ 40 अरोल पैरन हेमोरॉइड्स हीमोग्लोबिन वाज लो व्हाट इज द पीएस मॉर्फोलॉजी आई थिंक दिस वाज सिंपल क्वेश्चन हियर एंड आई हैव नॉट गॉट द अदर ऑप्शंस हियर बट आई थिंक व्हाट व्हाट वी आर ट्राइंग टू आस्क यू हियर to try to ask you whether you know that if it's a case of rnsc anemia it looks to be a case of rnsc anemia i'll show you a microcytic hyperglobinemic picture this is straight away question and there's no thing seen there okay so option shoe uh, c was hame in the stool um so next question ulcerated nodule on the tip of the nose measuring 0.7 cm and this was the image given here and if you see this area here is showing you a palisading okay it is showing you a palisading here even though some of the other uh, images can show you a case of uh, uh, i i tell you three things in my vibe images i show you only three type images i show you squamous cell carcinoma in the vibe sessions i show you squamous cell carcinoma i show you basal cell carcinoma and i show you malignant melanoma only three images show you and that is what is always asked okay so i don't know but that is how i feel lucky and my students will also feel lucky because this is surely a case of basal cell carcinoma what is the answer here had this been a case of melanoma you would have seen a lot of melanin pigments a squamous cell carcinoma would have shown you a keratin pearls and yes a nevus might have shown you the the hyperpigmentation and the melanocytes uh, deposition in the basement uh, layer that is so the certain basal of the skin layer okay so next question middle age uh, women uh, who died of covid-19 infection she was on in ventilator now what do you will find in the alveoli so this is surely a case of ards again straight away taken from my notes <laughs> i should not say this but yes uh, a lot of students will always find this a case of ards and the finding on ards will be a thick fibrin lining the alveoli remember it is this second image shows you finding of any inclusion body which can be remember the covid-19 does not show any inclusion remember this is a inclusion body inclusion body can be seen in measles it can be seen in the uh, other viral infection also but this is looking like a case of uh, covid-19 infection and the answer must be a fibrin deposition which is seen in a case of ards it will not show you the case of acute and the chronic hemorrhages okay acute and the chronic hemorrhages okay the some of the hue saying that the, the, this was 0.3 cm so maybe we can check it again but what it is it is surely a case of basal cell carcinoma Okay, look at this question. Now I have been told so many times by students, "Is sir, please, the option here was not HV sixteen. I completely agree. The option was not human papilloma sixteen, but it is a case of multiple vaginal cervical uh, warts in a patient, and she was shown to be at risk of HPV by DNA analysis. And now, when she has a maximum risk of HPV, what is the strain that it can be shown? So, what is your answer, guys? What have you marked here? Tell me. What have you marked in this question? you must have marked yes 18 remember 16 and 18 are the two right answer here because 16 is not in the option so 16 and 18 are the high risk hiv because it is not in the option i think we can all go with the 18 okay in ards it is not eosinophilia right remember ards has neutropenia and not eosinophilia okay yes 18 is right answer okay chalo agla question chalte hain um again i repeat uh, the pdf of this will be available in my telegram group after the session you can download it from there and try to use it for revision purpose in the next upcoming exams okay a 6 year old male in extremity she was admitted with a, a history of chest infection 2 year back hbc shows increased hbf and hbs so <clears throat> this is surely a case of sickle cell anemia there is no doubt about it and the two things given here first of all there is a pain extremities showing you something called as hand foot syndrome okay is showing you the hand foot syndrome and secondly with a chest infection the pulmonary infection for a acute chest syndrome it matches with what is called as a sickle cell anemia okay sickle cell anemia uh, even though i'm looking at all your uh, you know um, suggestions here like question number 19 my clumping of rbc was also there i'll just uh, check it again and carcinoma means uh, carcinoma means 11 no sir nahi beta Uh, देखो 16, 18 आता हाई रिस्क एचपीवी प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड दिस एंड अदर 32, 33 दो 31 एंड 33 देस आता लो रिस्क एचपीवी प्लीज रेमेंबर दिस ओके नाउ यू आर सेइंग इन दिस क्वेश्चन एचबी ए टू वाज देयर इन विसेट ऑफ एचबी एस ओके दिस वाज एचबी ए टू तो पहली बेटा एचबी ए टू वाज अनदर क्वेश्चन आई थिंक यू मस्ट आल्सो हैव गॉट कंफ्यूज्ड देयर प्रोबेबली दिस वाज वन अदर क्वेश्चन प्लीज लुक एट दिस यू आर सेइंग इज नॉट एचबीएस 
HbA2 was there. Even though HbA2 should also be increased in a case of sickness and anemia, HbS was not there. Okay, okay, I agreed. So HbA2 was there, HbS was not there. So I completely agree to your suggestions. Um, it was not HbS. Uh, some of you saying it should be. It should be a case of still. It should be a case of sickness and anemia because it's showing you two things. Number one, hand foot syndrome and the acute chest syndrome. Both of them are quite sensitive of sickle cell anemia. Okay, I completely agree with you. A blood transfusion was there. Okay, good. There's also a history of blood transfusion. Okay, there was also a history of blood transfusion. Let me just add that. There was a history. Sorry. There was a history of blood transfusion. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> history of blood transfusion was also there. I agree. Okay. S peak was high, was it? Okay, S peak was high. Good. So S peak was high. That's a very important history you have given me. So as I is this is going to make question by the S peak was high. S peak was high. I think that is quite sensitive or sickle anemia only. And there was a mention of squamous cell carcinoma highest in. They mentioned the risk of squamous cell carcinoma in highest in. Okay. Is that so? I need some or more of you to please uh, tell me that. Okay. HbA2 was rest and the S window has a has a S peak. Okay. Agreed. Chalo. Thank you. Still the answer surely is uh, sickle cell anemia. It cannot be beatharsemia because of two reasons. Chest infection and pain extremities is not a feature of thalassemia. It should be a feature of sickle cell anemia only. I am not saying it was hand foot written, written, written there. But look at the pain extremity. This is called as hand foot syndrome. Okay. This is called as hand foot syndrome. I am not saying hand foot syndrome was there in the question. I am saying this is sensitive of hand foot syndrome. Okay. Chalo. Uh, this was a peripheral smear of sickle cell and the patient has a knee pain. She, they had swelling also. There was a lytic lesions and sclerotic borders along the radial recent areas and the fluid aspirate was a infection. So this is a typical case of the osteomyelitis in a case of sickle cell anemia. Okay. This is a typical case of osteo myelitis in a case of sex anemia and is caused by a salmonella typhi. Okay, this is a case of salmonella typhi in the question. Okay, I'm not saying it was hand foot syndrome written there, but surely there was a pain in extremities as mentioned by most of the students there. So I believe that please we can um, maybe we can have that discussion. So would you like to okay? Let us come back to the previous question. Now, so saying that there is pain extremities was not there, agreed. Okay. There was a history of blood transfusion, agreed. Now, was there S peak or not? Tell me, was there S peak written or not? Was this there or it was not there? Because if there was S peak written there, it surely becomes a case of sickness anemia. If it was not a case of S peak, it doesn't become a case of sickness anemia. Now, tell me, was that written there or not? So, you are saying this was not in the question. Okay, chalo. Agreed. So, you are saying, so this was not in the question. So, I was cutting this here. Okay. Now, tell me. There was S peak was there. If you are saying S peak, there is no doubt. Na, that case becomes a case of signal anemia. Okay. Chalo. Okay. If you are saying it was a S peak, then it is surely a case of signal anemia. There is no, you know, <laughs> there is no doubt about that. Then. Okay. In thalassemia, infection can occur. Why will infection occur in thalassemia? Tell me one thing. What is the cause of infection in a case of thalassemia? Why? Chalo, next question. So this is a case of anemia, and this answer is sorry, Salmonella typhi was also a question that we always teach in our uh, question. So this is a case of dry cuff and this bilateral hyla lipanopathy. It becomes a case of the sarcoidosis. It becomes a case of sarcoidosis. So Guys, uh, I believe uh, we can have a discussion on some of the questions surely, but overtly, you know, the question was not very out of the box. And if you can just turn the pages of my uh, notes, I can, you know, you can see those. It's all written in my notes simply. Sickle cell question written in the notes. This is a sickle cell question in the notes. Now, this is again in, in the why we can always talk about the high risk of the HPV and the low risk HPV. It's a vibe image. This is again a question of ARDS from the lens pathology. Uh, look at this question a vibe image of basal cell carcinoma. This is surely a simple case, you know, no one made this question wrong. This is again the same thing. SCD lupus nephritis again is a uh, topic that we always talk, teach in the renal cell, in the renal uh, case. This is a celiac disease. We talk about this in the, uh, you know, uh, in a case of 
GIT. In GIT, I take only few uh, things, and you know those things always work. I talk about the colonic polyps. I talk about the malabsorption syndrome, a Hirschman disease, and they always work. You know, it is never failed. Inflammatory bowel disease. I always talk about this. Okay. Um, this is a case of infertility. Now, this is I believe that some of you are still uh, confusing this because you saying that there is a a lot of patient brain thickening was there and was also fibrosis. So if there was a patient brain thickening and fibrosis, then it could be a case of testicular atrophy. But because most of the students have agreed with this image, I will go with this only right now. But I'm very open to your discussion only. It should be a case of cerebral cell tumor. Uh, other options. This is a verbal procedure by question. Uh, you can find this in my notes of the uh, neoplasia. A straight line of it right in there. Uh, Miller cell disease. Again, a straight notes question. Uh, fat embolism on hemodynamics. A simple question here. This is a uh, image which I took a few days back in the pancreas histology in the YouTube session of um, DVMCA. And this is a very, you know, this is a vibe image. It's a practical question. So many things we have discussed about this. Uh, this is a malacoplakia. And I understand this would have not been taught by me. I completely agree with this. And maybe you are actually with the option by looking at the white, yellowish, black plaque on the question. This is a simple case. I think you all have made this correct only. It's a case of CMN and TH chromosome. Now, this uh, is a case of thalassemia minor and therefore it should be a case of HPA2 being tried to measure for looking it out. Next is uh, the simple diagram I was draw in a case of inflammatory inflammation chapter. Uh, Autumn and uh, uh, the notes question, lifespan and the, you know, there's two question. One was on the lifespan, one was on the uh, telomere also. And this is a thermography from my TND questions and this is the first page of the question that we always take in the case of uh, genetics chapter okay so guys um, i'm not i'm not saying that the question was very easy but yes if you please try to trust the notes try to revise the notes again and again right now don't think about anything else try to just relax your mind make yourself cool and tell yourself that you have really performed good and maybe you'll get a result that you all deserve there okay uh, the basic idea of recollecting a question and recalling this on the same day is that we get to know where we're we going wrong, if at all. And at the same time, if I perform well, if I perform well, you know, it is your day. Go out, enjoy, have fun, chill, and please let me know how uh, you are impacted by my notes or the sessions that we always take, the motivation sessions, you know, uh, the challenging sessions, how to. Uh, Plan your days ahead, 100 day schedule, 60 day schedule, 25 day schedule, 7 day schedule, and the day before the exam. Always do it for you. Let me know in the comment below how much you are benefited by the sessions. Maybe I'll do it more further uh, for your juniors because you will get a rank and get into MD seat. But I'll do it for surely for your juniors. Wishing you all the best. Take care. God bless you all. And I'll take it from here to the next faculty who will take their own chapters. But 25 question pathology really is a good number. 33 question from NICT and 25 question pathology. You should read this subject very, very well. Take care. God bless you all and stay happy. Okay, please, uh, you can look into this. Um, you know, uh, I've always, always put this Telegram logo. You can join the Telegram uh, thing and please join the Telegram group where you can find the PDF of this session as soon as the session ends there. Take care. God bless you all. Goodbye. Take care. Bye-bye.